Oh, this is a fun one. I'm going to uh, clean the car today. Yeah, yeah, I did it last week. But I uh, think it's time to do it again. I've got a very important to meticulously clean this the old the old girl here if she's going to have a good and long life in the best possible condition I used to um, use this car all the time this was my this was my daily driver Last few months I've gone and got another gone and got another car and this old girl's kind of gone into retirement I suppose. Semi we'll call it semi retirement. Um, I now do a thing called a retro Friday where I drive this one to work just to give her a run make sure she gets a weekly bit of a weekly uh, outing I much prefer to drive this one actually than the, the newer one that I bought this is a 1992 model uh, I bought a 2002 model but um, it's much the newer one's much smoother and a bit more powerful quieter nicer ride all those things you would expect but uh, it just doesn't have the character that I've come to enjoy from this one over the past sort of five years that I've had ownership this was a um, this car's been in the family for Ten years, at least. No, probably twelve years now. Uh, my sister bought this in 2012, and uh, somewhere around 2014 or 15, 14, I think she wanted to sell it. But my my dad had taken such a shining to this car that. He didn't want that to happen, so he bought it from her for the price she paid. And um, whenever I went to his house and stayed at his house, he gave me the keys to this car. And in that time, I made some improvements and looked after it. So five years ago, I was wanting to buy a good, reliable, sturdy vehicle um, and uh, he had about five other cars and didn't really use this one so I, uh, he gave it to me actually, it was really nice so it was, but it was given to me on the on the proviso that I never sell this car so I agreed to that um, two years ago uh, two years ago she reached the milestone of 500,000 kilometers that's about what is that 350,000 miles or something for those who don't speak in kilometers and um, at, at that point in time I decided that with a little bit of assistance um, it was time to rebuild the engine so I won't tell the long story but the short story is the engine started running not so well uh, I pulled it out and I gave it I gave it to an engine builder to do a complete rebuild and that's a new turbo, a new injector pump, new 
internals, new machined and renewed ceramic piston heads and all of the business. Uh, they uh, spray painted it, um, spray, spray painted the uh, the engine block in a colour of my choosing, which I chose to match the exterior colour of the car in a, a nice burgundy or mulberry red, as it's called, 3H4 code. The code is 3H4. For those of you who know Toyotas of this era, it was a full, uh, all genuine parts rebuild. So now I turn the turbo pressure up a little bit and I run a little extra fuel just to give it the pep that it needs in the modern world. So my routine in here Oh, yeah, of course. You might notice if you know the Australian Toyotas of this model and year You'll notice that uh, this isn't quite a standard interior. Um, I got in contact with a guy who has a contact in Japan. And I got myself a wood grain dash insert. That's all this bottom half of the dash, genuine Toyota wood grain. Uh, I fitted a touch screen double din stereo system it's an ebay one but i did my research and it's of the ebay ones quite good many features has internet you can hotspot the internet from your phone so you can have youtube or google maps or whatever you like on the screen dvd player still and um not sure whether you can see it or not, but I've got a standalone engine diag uh, not diagnostics, but a uh, engine monitoring system here, which when you turn the key on, it has uh, just you know, your basic things like um, engine uh, water temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure. Source gas temperatures, boost pressures, just all the things you need to know when you're out and about to keep your engine uh, in its best possible condition. So what I do here when I want to clean this girl, I start with the center console here. There's a leather leather top. And I have some oak wood hydrating leather care cream intense conditioner to preserve softness and durability. It's a protective UV barrier. There are several steps to this, but I only have the condition step. I think that is perfectly adequate. And I take this cream and I Squeeze it out. Onto the center console. I have a rag here. So I'm going to use this one. So I get myself two different colored rags. One for wiping the dashboard and one for using the hydrating leather conditioning cream. And I gently massage that cream into the surface of the leather. Careful not to overdo it though. Just rub the bulk of it in to begin with. And while we're cleaning the rest of the dashboard, We'll just give that time to soak in and we'll come back to that later and uh, rub off the excess that doesn't that uh, the leather doesn't absorb then we'll go to 
to the dashboard I have a uh, here a 303 branded protectant interior and exterior UV protectant um, spray and uh, spray spray on wipe off I found this to be very a very good product not that I'm endorsing it but uh, it's a product that I like doesn't contain silicon very important on the interior of vehicles not to use silicon because uh, it's great while you use it but as I've found in the past once you stop using it the Sun very quickly dries out your dashboard and and uh, your dashboard can then crack I used to use it on a vinyl roof I had on my first car yes I'm old I had a car with a vinyl roof and that's exactly what happened is that uh, I stopped doing it and the vinyl roof cracked the same goes for the interior so what you do is you We'll put this to the spray setting. There's a jet setting and there's a there's an off setting, and we will just, it's nearly empty. But we'll spray some of that on the dashboard up here. I like to start from the top and work my way down. We'll gently massage that over the whole surface area catching the drips as they come past. Don't forget the handle. We'll go down and around this area. I focus mainly on the driver's side while I'm sitting in the driver's seat. And when I want to complete the passenger's side with some detail and places I can't reach, I'll go over to the passenger's side and, and complete there. So in the spots like here, where I don't want to get the spray into the crevices where I can't clean it, I'll then spray it onto the cloth itself and I'll gently rub it all over, making sure to go between the switches in a vertical fashion. Just a nice small motion. Make sure to get all these horizontal ledges where the, the dust can catch. Move the, move the switches over when they're in the way. Don't forget the indicator stalks. Very importantly, because you're looking at it all the time, is the instrument cluster. It needs to be clean and, you know, it, if you don't do it properly and you leave dust on there, it just feels like, feels like you're in a dirty car. So it gives that area a good wipe. to get into all those corners that you uh, don't normally do over the boot of the transfer case stick that's uh, high neutral and low for your uh, four-wheel drive system. This vehicle is a full-time four-wheel drive so you don't have like some the high two, low two, high four, low four. This is just a high and low. Keep your cloth 
somewhat moistened as you continue on to the cup holder in the centre console area. If you have some hard to reach areas, find yourself a nice soft soft bristle brush such as this you can get into those crevices dab it onto the moistened cloth if you like I find it really useful for getting into the spots like your air vents small buttons that can be really problematic to clean out just move your air vents around and you can get underneath them and on top of them shock when you turn your, your vents, turn your uh, fan on and all this dust comes out, spreads it around the cabin. So what we do here is we try and dislodge a lot of that, let it fall to the ground and you can vacuum it up later. Don't forget if you've got overhead overhead console. If you've got an overhead console you can give that a little just a little brush and uh, a little bit of a wipe down up there, that's good. Now one thing that I often forget and shouldn't is the rear view mirror. circular motion there. Get all the dust off. We'll come back to that with a glass cleaner very shortly. So just make sure there's no spots here really. No significant major spots that you've missed. That's good. You can do a bit of the door as well while you're here. Go over that switch console. Those places where you put your hands a lot because the oils on your hands tend to kind of stick to things and can cause damage. Oh, we got a bit of light in here. Eh? Now, I'd like to just might have to reach over here. I might have to use this bottle. Drop down on the floor. again make sure it's in the spray function find a dry section on the, uh, on the rag that you're using here and we can just to save it dripping we can see how it drips straight down and off so catch those drips with the rag then we'll give uh, give that mirror a little bit of a a little bit of a treat, shall we? Lovely little treat here with the glass cleaner and to clean that off effectively we use some uh, some dry paper towels to give us that nice streak free finish that we're looking for with uh, things like windows and, and mirrors. Oh yeah, look at that. 
get, get your fingernail with the uh, paper right in around those edges so that when you look in the rear view you're a, it looks like a hole in your front windscreen not like a mirror it's beautiful now since that's been mostly taken care of there what I'm going to do is just take a couple more sheets of this uh, paper here and uh, just before we uh, are finished here of course don't forget that we need to go back to the center console that has been um, has been soaking in the hydrating cream and just give that a little rub just to take off the excess it hasn't been absorbed. Just go over the over the dash one more time here. You can sit back and just admire what we've we've done you know what they say if you park your car in the shopping center parking lot when you lock it and walk away if you don't turn back and have a look at your car are you really driving the right car I certainly do that with this old girl. Certain improvements I'd like to make as the years go by. Steering wheel's getting a little old. As I said, we've got 525,000 kilometers of use on this steering wheel. It's kind of worn away a little bit. It's getting some cracks. From the sun damage. I'll replace that when I find a suitable suitable wheel, probably one much the same as this but perhaps with a little bit of wood grain on here. I've seen some gear knobs that are a bit more flash than this one. Not a lot else though, not a lot else, I'm quite happy with the, the work done on this car and the condition of it. Excuse me, it's my belly telling me it's time for, uh, for eats, probably. But that's how I clean a dashboard of an old vehicle. It's quite simple. The products aren't expensive. But it is important to do, to keep it in tip-top condition. Different people may do it differently. So I hope you got something out of that. And um, oh, well, may have a look at another section of the vehicle in the in the coming weeks. Might do an oil change, perhaps when oil goes on special. It's quite expensive, so I only buy it when it's on special. 
I've bought the Toyota Genuine oil filter already, it's sitting in the garage. So we'll, uh, and the oil bypass filter, I have a spare one. Sitting, also sitting in the garage with the car parts. I want to get my hands on some quality oil at a good price, so I will, uh, we should have a look at doing that. Doing a nice oil, instructional oil change. It's very important to be able to look after your own car or else if you're always paying somebody else, sure, you have a bit more time on your hands, but you know, it's less money in your pocket. And really, I think it's doing these things that help you learn about your car. You know, as you're wiping over here, maybe you'll notice that one of the knobs are coming loose, so you can uh, fix that before it's a problem, before it falls off, or or as such. You now, when you're cleaning here, the windscreen, the sticker, the service sticker up there, you might notice, oh, it's uh, it's due for a service, which this one is, incidentally. And by looking at that taking notice of that, you'll know. It's time. Anyway, I hope you have a good week from here on. And um, we'll see you shortly. Yeah? Yeah?